Happiness through curiosity on the Ranveer Show. Welcome to TRS Clips. Okay, next yeah. question. What's <laughs> Richard Branson like? He's incredible. He's. It was such an honor to fly with him, and he is, you know, he is just an expert at crafting a great human experience. So I'm a you know technical person. I'm looking at technical details in the cabin, and Richard is looking at how do we create a life-changing, perceptive, shifting experience for our customers. Because, mm. you know, a lot of them are taking this journey. It's, you know, it's something that they wanted to do all their lives. So he was looking at it from the human experience. And, you know, I learned so much from him. Mm. From the outside looking in, he seems like he's really got his inner child alive. Yes. And this whole uh, Virgin Galactic thing is like his you know, child's dream in yes. like some ways. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's wanted to go to space for a long time. Mm. And, you know, he can't, he, he he's, just, you know, entrepreneur. He has so many businesses and he did want to open space up for everyone. And that's really the mission behind Virgin Galactic and why he started the company. What's his energy like? Was it his first time? It was his first time yes. in space. Yeah. <laughs> so how did he react? He was having a great time. Um, okay. He also, he had, I mean, he truly, truly is living life to the fullest. Mm. And he also used this flight to hopefully inspire the next generation. So during the flight, he actually read a message to children. He basically said, you know, look what I've done. And now I'm passing the torch to you all. Let's see, you know, what are you going to take humanity to next? Mm. And it was great to see that. He read that um, message for the children and then he unstrapped and floated around the cabin with all of us as well. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> wow. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. Uh, when do the flights uh, begin? Like for yep. commercial passengers. So right now we're in this modification period. Um, we're going to be done by the sum by the end of the summer. Um, we'll finish our flight test this year, and commercial service will start first quarter next year. Mm, so that's okay. It's twenty three January or yes. Feb. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Two thousand twenty three. Okay. Um, could, could you describe the ascent a little bit, like from the moment it takes off? I'm assuming that the 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 ship is like vertical. Is it, is it yeah, vertical at the so start? Yeah, so we start, it's actually um, two vehicles. It's okay. an aircraft called Mothership and a, a spacecraft called Spaceship. So really good at naming things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it takes off from a runway and the two vehicles are mated. The Mothership is basically carrying the spaceship. Gotcha. We go up uh, to about 45,000 feet, which is the release altitude. It takes about 40, 45 minutes. And once you get to the release altitude, they'll do final checks and then you'll hear it, which is just amazing. Release, release, release. And then the spaceship will drop for a few seconds and the rocket motor will light and you're horizontal when the rocket motor lights. And uh, just a few seconds after that, you you take a turn up to space. Wow. So you feel uh, the G's both in your chest and in your head just uh, for a few seconds. And I'm then, assuming commercial travelers will have to go through like a lot of training before. Yeah, it's only five days. Actually, oh, okay. it's part of their mission of opening space up to a wider swath of the population. We wow. want to create a vehicle that people don't have to be training for years to be able to enjoy. Mm. Um, you know, my personal journey, I, you know, I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was young. And I um, I'm one of those children uh, <laughs> that decided to plan out my life very early. Mm. Um, so I was like, OK, I'm going to go get my engineering degree. Then I'm going to work in industry. Then I'm going to work for NASA and then I'm going to apply to be a NASA astronaut and then I'm going to go to space. <gasps> I was like, what could go wrong? <laughs> where, where did you study? Um, I studied at Purdue University because gotcha. uh, Neil Armstrong, <laughs> first man on the moon, went there wow. too. So I, everything I've done was like to try to get to space. Wow. Uh, how old were you at the time of the first uh, The first, flight? the Anasari X Prize was 2004. So I was 15 or 16 years old. And at the time of the uh, the actual flight? which last is year, uh, I was 33 last year. Is that the usual age for astronauts? I mean, personally, I didn't think I was going to go to space so soon. Mm. <laughs> um, but, you know, in, there's a paradigm shift happening. You know, most people, I mean, up till now, uh, people train and have to do it as a professional career, go to um, ISRO, ESA, NASA to, to go to space. But now, you know, anybody over the age of 18 I can technically go to space now um, through commercial vehicles. What's the like kind of roadmap for someone who actually wants to become an astronaut and who's passionate yeah. about well, space? Well, I mean, this is why this is why it's incredible. If you want to go to space now, 
you you can buy a ticket to go to space. And that mm. wasn't the case before. Mm. You know, up until just, you know, I think last year we passed about 600 people. I think we've set 600 people to space as a, as a you know, collective humanity. I mean, that's a very small number of the population of Earth. So Virgin Galactic has over 800 people already signed up to fly. Mm. And it's incredible to think that, you know, once we've flown all of our customers, we'll have doubled the number of people that have gone to space. Are, are you allowed to speak of uh, how expensive or cheap the tickets are? Yeah, there it's 450000 for a ticket, which is what? Three and a half crores. Mm. Did I say it? Did I, hopefully I Seven, converted that right. Yeah, yeah, roughly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's something that we hope to see go down as we start scaling up and we fly more often and technologies continue to advance. Stupid um, question, but yeah. what makes the ticket that expensive? Is it just the fuel? Is it like the engineering involved? Like, is it, there must yeah. be something that's driving up the cost. Yeah, it's the, you know, development operations. And right now we only have two spaceships um, at the moment. But as we scale, as we get more efficient in manufacturing the vehicles and operating the vehicles, we're able to bring that that mm. price down. But what I what I think is ex really exciting, though, is, you know, if you look at the number of people who have gone to space, you break it down, less than 100 have been women of those mm. 600 people that have gone. I mean, and of those, four were Indian. Mm. Four, single digit, four. And as we start flying more and more people, you're going to have people from different backgrounds, different cultures, I mean, different geographic regions go to space and each be able to share an experience in a completely different way. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the entire episode and also check out this playlist that we've curated just for you.